Thank you, Sarah, very much. Um, before we get started, I would like to fire up a continuous slideshow. I didn't think I would be uh, calm enough to be able to click a slideshow. So these are all images that I have shot in the Red River area, and they're all shot on my iPhone 4S. I'm an iPhoneographer, and so you might recognize yourself or some of your neighbors up there. What I'd like to share with you the next couple of minutes are two of my passions. They are the city of Shreveport and folk slash outsider slash neo-outsider art. And for some reason, the swamp rat muse has come to me and said, you must combine the two of these in your front yard. <laughs> so that's what's happening in our front yard. Let me tell you about where I live and create. I live in Highland. It's a historic, funky neighborhood in a mid-sized city in the American South. Uh, it's the state of Louisiana where I live. You know Louisiana. It has alligators, Mardi Gras, crawfish boils, daiquiri shacks, more about that later, <laughs> and voodoo. And our block is the most broadcasted block of the city of Shreveport. Um, it was featured on C-SPAN earlier this year. I'd like to talk a little bit about front yards and how I'm violating probably one of the biggest rules in America. Um, I live in a little bungalow. It's one of the smallest houses on the block. We have a shared driveway with our neighbors. Do you all know what a shared driveway is? Yeah. That's when houses were built like in the 20s when people maybe didn't even have a car. It's not like when they have two and three and four and five cars per family now. So that's an interesting way. So I've had uh, some opportunity to build community by having a shared driveway. You not only have to be mindful of people living in your house, but you're also mindful of the people that you live next door to. So I'm going to take my tiny front yard and my huge porch and make happiness and build community, kind of expand on that. And the swamp rat muse has told me to do that, so I'm okay with that part. But my brain tells me it's a radical, radical, radical idea. Because there are rules to being a resident of the United States. In the United States, we like our front yards to be very, very boring. It's OK to get creative inside. You can paint your kitchen purple. The neighbors don't see that. I have to confess, part of my house already is purple on the outside. There wasn't room for purple on the inside because the kitchen is slate blue with topless mermaids swimming about. So we put the purple outside. In the backyard, you can get a little crazy. We allow that in America. But in the front yard, we're very particular. We don't like any weeds. We like trees. We like green grass and maybe some pink flowers. And the porches, they have to be clean, no signs of humans, and please, no upholstered furniture no matter how comfortable it is to sit on that big chair and smoke your cigarettes in the winter. I'm not confessing anything. <laughs> we do have some, uh, some exceptions, though. Signs are okay in our front yards. Big storks, you know, that announce the birth of babies. Um, school spirits, school uh, pride signs, those are okay. Real estate signs announcing this house for rent, this house for sale, those are all right, and construction buy signs, we're okay with those. And holidays, amazingly, in the United States of America, we allow creativity during the holidays. It can be as simple as a mass-produced flag printed with a pansy that celebrates spring, or it could be some of those big, inflatable, plug-in, obnoxious, <laughs> billowy things that are Santa Clauses and and snowmen that are up in your yard until January or perhaps March if you're some of my neighbors. Um, <laughs> the rule is you can get creative in your front yard as long as it's mass produced. We don't want any sign of handmade, do it yourself. We like to keep that in the backyard or in the house. Amen. So you want to take that party in the back, and definitely, please, for God's sake, you don't want domino tables, barbecue pits. <laughs> Put that in the backyard and wear the headphones, keep the music, no thumping. We don't want that. 
So why am I breaking all the rules of the United States of America by putting a folk art environment in my front yard? The swamp rat muse told me to do that. And when that swamp rat muse tells you to do something, you want to listen, because we've got two neighbors in Shreveport, William Joyce, Bill Joyce, and Brandon Oldenburg, who listened to that swamp rat muse, and they came home with an Academy Award. So when she sings, you definitely want to pick your stuff up and dance with her. Some more about folk art environments. Some more famous ones are the Watts Towers in Los Angeles. Um, in Austin, there's the Cathedral of Junk, and in Houston, there is the Orange Show. Folk artists are mainly untrained. No bachelors or masters, and therefore no huge debt hanging over those folks' heads. <laughs> Most of them don't even consider themselves artists. Some of them do. Um, I've been classified as a neo-outsider artist, which is like the next generation of outsider artists. And most folk environments are rural. So how did I decide to build mine in the middle of the city? Well, I may not have grass after the hell-hot summer last year, when the weather cooked up my front yard like a platter of fried chicken. But I am going to have some hand-stitched folk art in my front yard. And the subject I've chosen is voodoo. It's an ancient religion that came from Africa, and it came to Shreveport by way of New Orleans. Now, why voodoo? Because nothing says Louisiana like voodoo. And I thought it would be really kind of neat to have some bright, creepy voodoo dolls exploding all over the place. <laughs> I could have gone with another way to celebrate Louisiana, huge cutouts of styrofoam cups with <laughs> straws taped to the top to celebrate the drive through daiquiri industry. You all know about the drive through daiquiri industry, right? Okay, in Louisiana, you can be in your driver's seat. They will hand you a styrofoam cup with shots of hard liquor, like an icy or a freezy, and you'll be in your driver's seat behind the wheel, and as long as you don't take the tape off or undo the straw, the state of Louisiana considers that a closed container, and so you're okay. <laughs> so why the front? Well, art is a happiness maker. Like folk, outsider, neo-outsider art, it's always made me really happy and joyous to look at it because it's very childlike and very simple and easy for me to understand. It reminds me of growing up and traveling in a beat-up old station wagon down the red dirt roads in Oklahoma. And I think I have that connection to it. Why in the front yard? Well, I have a secret. I'm not shy. I like being the center of attention. I like being the center of attention. But there's also fear. Who am I to knock on the door of the great and powerful Oz and to question authority? Who am I to put a folk art environment in my front yard in this United States of America. Maybe this stitching is a way for me to find my flock. You know how birds of a feather flock together? I have a couple of friends that are artists and they live in Highland and they have a blacksmith shop. And earlier this year they had it fired up. And there was a guy that rode by on his bicycle. He was new to Shreveport and he was new to Highland. And when he realized that they were out there blacksmithing, he jumped off his bike, ran into the yard, and introduced himself. So because they chose to go ahead and have a blacksmith shot, this guy was able to find community just a little bit faster. Um, it wasn't a cookie-cutter house that these artists were in. And they're creating not cookie-cutter friends, but friends I think that we all want that are maybe part of our flock. By creating a Louisiana voodoo art front yard, maybe I can create some happiness when people bike or ride or walk by. Maybe I can attract some flock-seeking folks. I'd like to see more folks take chances in their front yard. In Highland, we have a handful of folks who are actually gardening in their front yard. I went to one today and took some photographs. There's even a bowling balls in this lady's front yard. <laughs> in Austin, there is a group of people called Yardists. And like many places have uh, yearly garden tours, these folks have funky 
yard art tours with painted bowling balls and bottle trees, and they actually do the tour once a year. I'd like to see that happen here. I think, and bear with me, what I'm creating is a year-round festival in my front yard. I don't, I don't have to wait for Burning Man. I don't have to wait for the Do Nanny or Mardi Gras or our do-it-yourself vending festival, the Texas Avenue Makers Fair, to live my authentic life. I can fling open that front door every day and step into my authentic life. But you have to hold on tight when that swamp rat comes dancing with you. She works her muse mojo magic on you, and you never know where it's going to go. It's seeping into my other work. She told me to start making soft voodoo dolls, and I have. And incredibly, I have a museum gift shop that's actually interested in carrying them. So you never know where the swamp rat is going to take you, the swamp rat muse. You just have to be aware and, I guess, listen for her. How about you? Are you waiting for Burning Man? Are you going to go this year or next year? Are you going to wait until then to be your authentic self? Well, I have a machine, so it's official, printed coupon, and it's from the Swamp Rat Muse. And it's good for voodoo happiness and mojo magic making in your front yard. I'm going to give these to you, and if we run out, I'll put the information on my blog. And then you can begin to live your authentic life, be who you really want to be, and let's see if I can toss them in the back further. Together, oh, not a very good tosser, am I? We can find our flock. Whoa! Thank you. Oh, like that. That doesn't even work.